the world on fire. Welcome, everyone, to the next episode of The Foley of Man. Now with more lighting. My name is Chris, and with me here today... <laughs> Robert! And today we're coming to you... Not live, we're coming to you... <laughs> Wait, we are alive. No, <laughs> if you're watching this message, then Chris and I are dead. Woo! And you are the benefactors of our will. <laughs> Prepare for all the debt we can imagine. <laughs> There's an awful lot of horse porn here. <laughs> but it's all to the tune of like really creepy, like <laughs> farmer music. <laughs> oh, all right. Anywho. So welcome back to the Foley of Man, a show where Chris and I here. He's a brony. I'm not a brony. We review my little pony fan fiction but wait don't go there's more <laughs> we know you're running stop please walk don't run to your nearest convenience store uh, the crux of this show primarily yes obviously there's my little pony fan fiction but it is with the background of the world of Fallout, the video game, and My Little Pony, the cartoon. And it's more like ponies being dropped into the scary, creepy Fallout world with uh, similar, you know, pony names and tags and such. Yeah, it's, it is it is not a, um, a equestrians out of equestria kind of story where it's like, oh, suddenly in the Capital Wasteland, we have horse. It really is a hippogriff out of water story is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... The, the, there are no hippogriffs in this particular tale. The first text we covered is a book called Fallout Equestria written by KCAT. And this text that we're reading is Fallout Equestria Project Horizons uh, with the main character of Blackjack and was written by Somber. So uh, I always like to start off somewhere in the show. Thank you, Somber, for uh, giving us uh, the tacit permission uh, to read and review your story. We haven't received, uh, received a, de a cease and desist yet, so I'm assuming yes. And this week we will be covering chapter 13. So if for any reason you have not read chapter 13 and for some reason you're watching us as you're reading the story, which you may very well be doing. Yeah. Pause. Go read chapter 13 or just let us be your cliff notes. Yeah. So where we last left our crew, our, our hero. Yeah, our heroine. It's kind of weird. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, I don't want to talk about where I left my heroine, Chris. <laughs> I mean, don't you keep it in the fridge? No, I keep it in the truck well, stop. I keep it in the truck stop off of Interstate 40 outside of Mebbin. Yeah, that sounds about Duh. Right. <laughs> don't touch my heroine. <laughs> where we last left off. Blackjack had been captured by the Enclave. The Enclave are Pegasus ponies. Uh, they're uh, evil for the most part. Uh, they're, you know, they're, they're Sky Nazis. Is that safe to say that they're just Sky Nazis? Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to say Sky Nazis? Yes. Yes. OK, so the, the Sky Nazis had captured her and she finds out that her her friend Morning Glory, uh, who, who'd been staying in contact secretly with the Enclave all along, is like, blah, 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 Mr. Freeman. I put that thing there because I wanted them to capture you. But all according to plan. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> they can't really do. They can't really be. It'd be, it'd be like a, it'd be like a round thing. So you like start at one end and you yeah. roll it. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> so it's like it kind of sounds like when you when a bowl falls on the floor and it kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm imagining a cult where like that's 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 the sound that they all do to like summon some great evil god <laughs> you walk into a hallowed hall and they're all just like rubbing their hooves together like coconuts for the greater hoof oh no all right so enough about sky nazis well actually the whole rest of this chapter is about the sky nazis um anyways uh they're super friendly and they're like yeah i know you killed two of those guys out there but in fairness they were trying to kill you you were just yeah. doing what nature intended you know when i try and shoot you and you try and murder me and rip out my genitals that's yeah you know it's you know it's like that scene uh from the boys on amazon it's like we're even now bitch yeah <laughs> where it's very obviously not even or equivalent in any way or a bitch I hope that nobody at home is too alarmed at the uh, view of the, the rings in Chris and I's eyes. We have a new lighting set up this week. Uh, we're not being abducted, right? We're OK, nor are we under any duress. We are of sound and sober mind currently. Um, um, I don't want the, you to I can't guarantee the last part. <laughs> First two work, though. Well, I'm of sober mind. Hello, sober mind. You're so you're <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> May I clear you up? I swear to God, you have to have illegitimate children somewhere. The dad jokes are too, they're too <laughs> intense. Uh. So. Blackjack has been captured. 
she's been captured. But sort of like, but you quid pro quo, Blackjack, quid pro quo. Yeah, it's it's actually more like um, the abduction of um, Belle in uh, Beauty and the Beast. How? Well, in please, that, please you, can't, you can't really super leave, but you can probably just go ahead and leave. You are free I mean, to roam the grounds. Yeah. I give you that freedom. But don't go in this room and don't touch the fucking rose. <laughs> basically, yeah. I mean, basically. Uh, um, and what you do. But they're like, uh, well, you know, so the leader of this group is, you know, this like charming whatever guy. He's, yeah. you know, very supposed he's very smooth. You know, he's uh, not militaristic in that regard at all. But of course, you know, Blackjack's like, but my mane is itching. Something about this doesn't add up. This is a little too tidy because they're like, listen, you come help us get rid of these raiders. And can't you like getting rid of raiders, right? Don't yeah. you, Blackjack? Don't you? If you do that, we'll help you go save your friend P21. And she's okay. like, bull fucking shit. Yeah, yeah. OK, sure. You'll do that for me. Yeah. After dealing with the thing that you can full day like damn well take care of yourself. Like, yeah, it's like, why do you need me to do this? Huh? They have power armor. They are way more equipped with weaponry. They have numbers. Blackjack also comes across uh, a an, an unfamiliar enclave soldier or an unfamiliar type of enclave soldier. I think the character's name is Minty Green. Minty Fresh. Minty Fresh. Right. Um, who is a unicorn pony in enclave armor yep and she's like but you're all pegasi what are you doing here and he's like well you know there were unicorns that were stationed in the clouds yep before the bombs dropped and we had served them and we have continued to serve them yes as the uber uh <clears throat> uber horse and he casts a really creepy spell and mimics uh blackjack's voice yeah per perfectly uh, which at the moment when it happened in the story, you you know what my first thought was. <laughs> plant! This is a plant! <laughs> We've watched far too many Nolan it's films. Just, it's, just, it's just like, this is important later! <laughs> yeah. And it, and it is. It is important later. Um, spoilers, right? Yeah. This, this, is, this, this whole fucking thing is spoilers, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I don't even feel like we should justify putting a quote unquote spoiler tag on any of these episodes. I, I really doubt there's somebody out there whose main way of consuming this story is just, just listening. It's yeah. just listening to us talk about it. I think it's way more people who've read this story and are like, yeah, I want to see what these weirdos think of it. Yeah. All right. Uh, actually, it's probably more like half of the people being like, I can't wait until they hate it. And the other half being like, I can't yeah. wait until they love it. So Morning Glory is like, just be nice and comply. And, you know, I really want to go back adventuring with you again, Blackjack. It, that's yeah. what I want to do. And it's like, OK, you're an idealist. But it's also kind of like you seem to have a weird sway over these people. They're being yeah. way too nice to you for somebody of like of you who don't have a rank. And um, previously, I thought you were just being treated like shit. Right. Like, yeah. oh, go do your stupid earth. It, yeah, because it really seemed like that the uh, that the volunteer corps was just a way for them to find the up the upstarts and send them down to die. <laughs> and now, young volunteer, you, you will, will die. die. <laughs> <laughs> now we're actually this, more of a now with this firepower, this fully armed and operational thunderhead. Yes. Um, so in this story, we also see uh, a sky chariot, right? Like a battle wagon. I don't remember what this one's particularly called. Doesn't really matter that they're they're strange because the Pegasi like sit in armored positions and flap their wings inside yeah. the vehicle and it somehow creates lift. Yeah. Magic. Sorry. Magic. So how it's supposed to work is that the wings themselves are actually a method in which the ponies natural magics may exert themselves into the world yes so the earth ponies the reason they can grow such food and build such constructions is because all they have to work with is their hooves and so the magic kind of builds, they are builds, humble builds. eastern european ponies yes slaves of the land yes um and some of them are Kopniks. <laughs> then you have the Pegasi, or I should say, I should say, start with the unicorns where they have a horn, which kind of is a central focus of their magic. So they can push the magic through the horn and then manipulate the world out through it. Yeah. As a foil. 
And then you have the Pegasi, where they use the wings as pretty much their manifestation of the internal magical powers of the world. And th th that's how they fly. Yeah. Otherwise, it would make no damn sense because their wings aren't big enough to support anything. <clears throat> so anyways, we're flying to a raider in a raider. Got to do my hoofs raider encampment. Um, and Blackjack is again like y'all clearly have the motherfucking firepower yeah. to take out a small band of raiders why do you need me right mm -hmm. and they've this thing is armed with like all these cannons and two missile launchers and it's just like it's intense right anyways they land and they get there and uh you know they're gavetching about you know how they're going to attack and blackjack's like, like well nobody's going to do anything i'll just go on in and they're actually kind of a little bit impressed because she's way less armored than the rest of them and you know gung-ho and she's like listen they're either gonna shoot at me and try and kill me and i'll kill them or they'll actually come out and try and parlay and i can figure out why the fuck y'all are so interested in this farm yeah and even at the end it doesn't i have to say why did they involve blackjack in this mission like it still doesn't to me make sense why they involved her i think it's because they wanted her perspective they could be so aloof and so out of it that they think, ah, one of the Earth kind. They can look at the other Earth kind and know what they're thinking. Or maybe as a test, the the leader, I, what is he, a colonel? I can't remember what his exact rank was. Lieutenant, colonel, something I like that. I think it was that. lieutenant. Okay, well, anyways, he, he, he seems hyper fascinated in the power that Blackjack has, mm -hmm. right? Her, how she continues to survive in all these situations he, because he, I think he truly sees her as an asset, right? Like, I don't know what to do with you, but I might have something for you to do, right? I, yeah. Like, I don't, I'm not just going to kill you. I, do I, think, I think that there's, you have, and you have more, you know, theoretically more value to me if I were to hand you over to like Deus, right? Yeah. Um, but, but so anyway, so they get in there and it's it's a farm, right? It's a farm. And and when they get in, of course, it's always a fucking horror show, right? Raiders are always just like awful. And it, Blackjack thinks, you know, maybe they'll just be normal and maybe this is blown out of proportion. But she goes in and they look at her with like, you know, pus filled yellow pinpoint eyes mm -hmm. and the gig, the nasty giggling cackle that the Raiders have that just like <laughs> this is like sadistic, sick sound. And three of the uh, ponies are literally consuming the flesh of what is supposedly their dead mother on the table. Yeah. She's busted open and they're consuming and it's like, God, when the raiders run out of other things to eat, they just eat themselves and each other. Or. 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 Because yeah, after, because she dispatches with the raiders quite quickly. Right. Um, but finds that there is actually quite a the bit house, of food. Even though they are dirt poor, the house is completely stocked with food. Yes. And so the Even question fresh food, fresh yeah, apples. apples and blackjack is going to like eat one of these. And so let's preface this one one way. So blackjack's being cautious, kind of going room mm. by room. But one of these enclave soldiers um, kicks open a door and basically gets jumped by the dad, the father of the family. And he throws her down the stairs and or over the railing and pins her and is like literally chewing into her throat and way her battle saddle is situated, her guns are like above his head. There's no way yeah. for her to defend herself. Not super smart. You, supposedly, they've already fought raiders at this point. Well, like it's not really entirely. Piss, it's really piss poor battle tactics. It is. But you also have to think about the fact that there aren't many targets where they probably train and they probably train against each other using similar tactics to themselves. That's true. So that that being so hyper isolated in the clouds like they are, yeah. that's, that's a fair point. Um, it's yeah. not outside their own possibility for them to be so arrogant that they think that there's no way that a fleet of small inflatable rafts could take on a u.s yeah. destroyer oh wait right <laughs> but anyways so uh blackjack jumps down and literally snaps the father's spine coming down but that doesn't stop him from still chewing on this enclave soldier's yeah. throat um and so she pulls back and is able to break his back more but that's still you know his like mouth mandibles are it. still yeah. going at it yeah so she, and not until she like basically pulls him off and busts his head does does that stop uh, and she pours you know a, a half effective healing potion and i wish there's so many names i don't write them down i wish i could remember them because this character comes back later right yep this enclave soldier that blackjack saves um basically tells her i i owe you yeah. you saved my life um and 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 there's just this whole situation doesn't make any sense to blackjack she's like this house is fully stocked 
the way that you become a raider is you eat tainted flesh. These farmers were poor, but they had plenty of food. Yeah. Why? Why? Why would this happen? And we find out later why this would happen. Uh, but here in the moment, Blackjack is like, well, I'm starving. I'm going to eat some of this food. And the ponies whose life she saved takes it from her, smashes it and says, no, this is all enclave property. And yeah. they box it up in metal crates and they take off with it. And you're like, enclave property. Yeah, this is why would this be enclave? Yeah, property? nothing about this. is. It's so it's not that it is obviously in the moment. So, it's not that it's bad writing. It's just it's very, very clear that something is going yeah, on. Yes. Well, the whole time it's been implied blackjack's like something. These doesn't add. Everything has been hinted to us like, yes, this doesn't add up. This doesn't make sense. Yes, this is really fucked up. There's definitely something lurking underneath. Um, and I, I will say, I feel like uh, kind of compared to the last couple of chapters, I feel like the writing was very solid. In this chapter, I, I feel like it, it was well explained and particularly the the battle scenarios in, in this chapter. Again, I feel like Somber's kind of getting into a rhythm. I would say this is my favorite uh, chapter and of the story so far. Um, and it was when I read it. And it's kind of I, I'm trying to remember the exact point when uh, this story hooked me and the hospital did a little bit. But it didn't really. And I, it, we're getting to the point where I really started actually getting invested in the story. Gotcha. So, yeah. you just, so you just read 10 chapters expecting it to like pick up at some point? I was really, really into Fallout Equestria. <laughs> it's like I am willing to read anything well, and, and everything. And I'm sure just give me something good. This story came out in 2015, right? Uh, I think it, it was uploaded to Fim Fiction in 2015. OK, well, that's the yeah. only, that's the only reference point that yeah, I, I think it, I think it was actually like I think it started. It may have started like right before. Fall to Equestria ended. So it was, it was actually, I think, part of, but I can't remember I gotcha. exactly. Somber knows. Yeah, of course. Um, but, but it's inconsequential. Um, so where was I? Lost my train of thought. So anyways, we go back to the airbase and Blackjack is kind of sharing everything that happened and wants to decompress with Morning Glory. And she's even warning her like, morning, something doesn't add up here. Yeah. I don't know what they're telling you, but we need to go. Yeah. Like, they're not just going to let you go. Right. And then we start getting some murmurs from, again, the pony that Blackjack saved her life is like, you need to leave. Let us handle or let us take care of Morning Glory and you just get out of here. And she's like, well, why? And she's like, do you really think they're going to waste their time helping you? Yeah. And it's because this other pony, she's just security. She's not a medical officer. She's not an officer. She's just a, a boots on the ground, just yep. a soldier. And And she's like. I don't know. She says, I don't know what they're up to, yeah. but they're definitely not going to help you. Right. She says, you don't seem to understand just how racist Pegasi are. Right. Yeah. They they really you know, sky Nazis. Right. They, they really don't care about you. Yep. So anyways, um, but Blackjack is nosy and she's been given a little bit more free reign and range of movement. Um, now you can go into the room, but you still can't just the rose. Yeah. So anyway, she's she's up kind of in a in a loft area. Um, kind of, you know, going through some old memories. She opens up a safe and is reading some reports from there. And I don't think there's anything really too important in the story there, save one thing. Um, in the notes, the guy says, you know, I keep the the key to my safe, you know, taped underneath my desk. And so she yeah. reaches under the desk, there's the key, opens the safe. And in the safe is just a bunch of what she says, moldy papers that she's not interested in and a little black box. And when she opens the little black box, there's this big silver round mm -hmm. that starts making her radiation meter go off the scale. Yeah. It's like, whoa, this thing's hot. Uh, and she says, well, I don't know what to do with this. Puts it back in the black box, which is clearly lined some way to protect it and her and puts it in her saddlebags. And it just says silver bullet. Yeah, I, it's it's very interesting in that. I don't know if they ever go over what kind of shielding you would use for magical radiation. Yeah. Would it be lead? Would it be gold? I don't know. But there clearly must be something. If we want to hop back over to pray for a minute, mm -hmm. there there was a bag that was created with dark magical shielding to protect the uh, the the u user, I should say. Yeah. Uh, from the elements of harm. Yeah. So it's possible that e even though I don't know whether I'm sure KCAT mentioned that there was some kind of radiation shielding. Sure. in Vault Equestria, but um, this is obviously a, 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 a type of technology or magical technology which crosses the two universes and make it to where one is canon yeah. and the other. But anyways, so so that's something that's interesting. But she puts it in her bag and it's just a silver bullet. Doesn't say anything else about it. She says, listen, 
this damn thing is smart enough to tell me the value of iguana bits, <laughs> but it can't tell me any more about this bullet. Yeah. Maybe if she took it out of the shielding, it might be able to do more, but also probably not. Who knows? Yeah, it'd be able to give her a third, but like, you know, she, arm. She suddenly hears the voice of Morning Glory saying, you know, that she is a Dashite and that mm -hmm. she can do more good for Rainbow Dash here on the surface. And she's like, what? What on Earth? Morning yeah. Glory. And then all of a sudden she hears. Tsew, tsew. <laughs> yeah. And she's been shot twice. Mm -hmm. She realizes that she's bleeding. I should also say that she had the feeling that somebody invisible was nearby. Yeah. And so she takes tattered papers and swirls them around the room, which is actually pretty. That's a smart thing. Yeah, it's a very clever. Like, thing. Blackjack is not like she's not smart. Let's get something real clear. She is not smart. She's lucky. That was kind of uncharacteristically wise. Yeah. She was kind of a dust answer for a moment. Well, it's the it's the high perception, low intelligence. Yeah. Yeah, super low intelligence, super high perception. And what that is, is true? That what is, is true. finding she, the stealth she, unit. She, she has she, it is it is a passive perception check mm -hmm. or that's what it should be. I did have a contention in my recent D&D &D campaign. and I should stop hitting the table uh, with my DM because he was making us roll to perceive if somebody is stealthing around us. And I said, but you do understand that the way that you can tell if somebody sneaking against you is the creature rolls and my passive perception is either 13, 14, 15, you know, whatever yeah. it is. And if they don't beat my passive perception. I'm aware of them, but otherwise they totally are sneaky. And he's like, well, but that's not how I'm doing it. I'm like, well, that's how the rules are written. <laughs> I hate to be that guy, but like if you're the DM, if there's something that you're doing that's outside of the normal rule set, mm -hmm. you kind of have to tell us at the beginning. Yeah. I, I, you know, well, I feel like I feel like there's a there is a different a definite way to breach it without ruining what's sure. going on. And I understand in this instance, what he's doing is very fair to allow an opposed role. But you're also kind of implying that you know, now all of a sudden we we know somebody's there. But now we have to pretend we don't know that they're there. Yeah. Right. If I'm rolling to see if I can tell that something's there. Yeah. And it, oh, I guess I'm dumb. <laughs> That's yeah, why it's just, supposed to be just based do off a your... perception check. Now, if you're a really good DM and you want to do that, then just have them do a, do a perception check like every once in a while. And it's not related to anything. Right. You have to you have to throw us off the trail. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyways, uh, somebody that was invisible shot her and, you know, uh, she's in a medical bay and Morning Glory is pissed. She is really reaming the lieutenant. She's yeah. like, you know, what the hell? You clearly are not in control of the situation. If you have some soldier that's running rogue. around. Yeah, a rogue soldier that's taken her out. And he's like, well, you know, she did take out two of my men. I can't be responsible for it. And it's like, they are literally under your command. Yes, you are responsible for yes. that. Action. But she, Morning Glory, throws her a little shade and says, do I need to tell my father about my this? Father. My father. My Daddy, oh, daddy. So now we find out that Morning Glory is the second spoiled brat with daddy issues in this story. Because remember, there was the uh, well, I mean, I the Zodiac character. Yeah, I feel like that's probably the fourth, though. Really? Yeah, yeah. 21. <laughs> Blackjack. I, and now Morning Glory. Well, I mean, yes, they all have daddy issues, but not spoiled daddy issues. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is like this is like brat behavior. And so we also find out that Morning Glory was kind of a brilliant medical officer, but also the daughter of an important politician. Yeah. So makes you wonder why the Enclave came back for her and not on none of the other volunteers. It is. It is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And supposedly they're all dead. Yeah. Which I mean, uh, it's not like it's not like somebody has like voice recording of her being some kind of traitor to the cause. As we'll get to. Um, so let's skip ahead a little bit. Blackjack, I, I, there's a lot of little innocuous little things that we could cover, but I kind of want to I want to get to the done of, end of the summary. Blackjack goes snooping. She goes down into the bowels of this building and she finds out after coercing several guards who are just basically being dumb. She even hides herself as a guard wearing enclave armor and her wings are just pieces of cloth hanging at her side. So it's a ruse that only works at a distance. Yeah. Um, but she gets into this room and she opens the door magically. So she basically takes her magical bullet and puts it in and just like, yeah, you know, fists the lock Re and reams the lock, yeah, really reams the lock. It just gapes it wide open mm -hmm. and, um, and and gets into uh, this room. And in this room, it is, it is a jail cell, it, it's a prison. It's like. 12 different cells, and each one is full of just these wild, screaming, starved raiders, mm -hmm. right? They're giggling, they're cackling. Many of them have chewed their own lips or tongues out of their head. They just look awful. So 
Blackjack realizes like, oh, man, when when they're starving, it's not just that they'll eat other ponies, they'll eat themselves. Yep. And at the end of the hallway, strapped to a, uh, a, a, a restraining table. Yeah. Is a Pegasus who has had her wings amputated and is uh, just looks like she's clearly been tested upon. And there's a ton of empty syringes next to her, some filled with blood, some empty. Um, and she she has a guard that she has captive and she basically forces the guard to release the 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 the, the dismembered Pegasus. Yeah, the torture, Pegasus, the torture, tortured prisoner. Pegasus and put himself up on the table. Um. And the the Pegasus won't answer, won't tell her what happened. But she's also thinking like, dear God, you know, her having her wings ripped off, cut off is the equivalent of my horn being removed yeah. or, or smashed in. Yeah. Um, and I feel like she's destroyed a horn in the story, but maybe not. Maybe no, that, she had mentioned the line before. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, yeah, because she destroyed somebody else. That's horn, right. Yeah. She blew it off their head. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's just like incredibly painful and, yeah, and, and terrible. And as we had mentioned, as we it's your connection to the magic yeah, of the world. And it's, it's your connection with not only that, but your ability to manifest magic around you. It would be like us losing our hands. Yeah. But anyways, so I don't remember how she perceives this, but Blackjack realizes that she's not alone in the room. And when she does, the, oh, it's because the head explodes. She yeah. turns around in the, and trying to, to get the Pegasus to talk and the Pegasus head is like gone. Yeah. So she turns around and just grabs three guns or two guns and just starts firing wildly around the room. And sure enough, boom, 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 three blood holes open up in Minty Fresh. Minty Fresh. Mm -hmm. Who reveals himself as not only being invisible, but also capable of, again, throwing his voice and pretending to be someone he's not. Yep. And we realize after an intercom announcement over in the building uh, that they have faked Morning Glory's voice, basically making her admit to being a Dashite. We should also say the Pegasus that was strapped down had her cutie mark burned off and had the what is familiar to us, Rainbow Dash Dashite brand. Yep. The same thing that Calamity had in Fallout Equestria. Yep. Um, and that Pegasus is also murdered. But we now see the lieutenant comes down and he's basically got guns trained on Blackjack and, you know, monologues and explains yes. why he's been there. They had been testing the Raider disease. Yeah, because it did not affect Pegasi. So because of the, the information, but it makes you wonder how long they've known about this disease because Morning Glory discovered the nature of it. But it seemed like they had been trying to find a way to inoculate random people with it. And then the question is like, OK, so is the Enclave's solution to bringing peace down here to make everyone fucking crazy so they just starve and die off? Kind of, sort of, yeah. kind of, sort of looking well, it, like that. It, it, hints, it hints that there is dissension. I, I should also clarify the food, the food that they gave the farmers had been inoculated with this and Pegasi are immune to it. Yeah. So it's almost like a version of the FEV virus. Yeah. And the, Ooh, did, sorry, I realized that was redundant. <laughs> uh, there is a little bit of a dissension, apparently, obviously in this, in the Pegasi ranks where various different parts of it are fracturing off into their own autonomous mm -hmm. uh, military structures, which is as... Any historian will tell you bad. Go study Rome. All the consuls of Rome had standing armies and were basically waiting to screw the other one out of power. Yes. Like if Rome didn't actually fight itself as much as it did in the multiple civil wars, think about how much more damage they could have done to that region of the it world. It was the Pax Romana. Yeah. OK. It first study the first triumvirate and then realized that within 12 years, there's a second triumvirate. And then they fight each other as well. And it's just like, God almighty, everybody wants they want the brass ring, my friend. They want to have all the rubles. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, he tells, you know, Blackjack, you know, disarm, take everything off. She's like, why are you just not going to kill me? And he's like, no, you're an asset. <laughs> right. Um, Who's going to believe you anyway? Like, what are you? Yeah. What is in their mind? What if threat could Blackjack pose to the Which Enclave. Which is so freaking dumb. They just keep, they they underestimate her over and over and over again. They've literally seen her murder them multiple times and get the one up on them. So they put her in a prison cell with two guards and say, you know, what's the worst that she can do? And here they are talking, you know, trash Smack, about her, right? Yeah. Smack to her face. And one of them even says like, stop, man. She's like right here, right? <laughs> why Why are you, why are you welcoming this? Why are you making her angry? And it's like, well, what could she do? She doesn't have any weapons. Well, you know, she says, which one of you has the keys? Mm -hmm. And before they can answer, 
Uh, she literally uses one of her magical bullets and bores out the eyes of one of them and bursts his head. Yeah. Right. Oh, she doesn't need weapons with that ability. Ah. Yeah. So the other one's like, uh, uh, here's the keys. <laughs> um, don't guilt me. Yeah, don't. Yeah, please. Um, and so she uh, is escaping and uh, she is trying to find morning glory. And when she finds morning glory, the room that she's being held in, she can't get into the room, but she sees a door that leads her to an observation deck. It's a, it's like a, a surgical room, yeah. right? It's an observation room. And she's stuck behind this glass, this one way mirror, right? And we, we, I feel like we see this in Fallout games and games in general. Like you're stuck behind the thing and there's yeah. the guy it's behind the, very, the glass and it is, your dad's about to die in well, Fallout 3. On another level, <laughs> it's even more cinematic than that yeah. because it is the cutscenes where you are kind of stripped of your ability yeah. as a player to have agency. So she's pounding against the glass and literally what's happening is the, the lieutenant is um, playing the audio cue, saying that it didn't really matter that Minty Fresh was dead because he did what he was. He finished. He completed his project, which they're playing the message, which I assume is also sending the message back yeah. to Thunder. Is it Thundercloud? Thunder Thundercloud? Head. Thunderhead. Sorry, th Thunderhead. Um, and then they burn off her cutie mark. Yep. They, they brand her cutie mark. And so uh, Blackjack is just so enraged. She shoots herself up with Hydra, with Dash and with Stampede. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so she and and literally it's like what you said. She wakes up several minutes later in a pool of viscera and blood. Yeah. Her mouth, she feels the sinews of muscle fibers in her teeth. Mm -hmm. And it's just the only way that she can count the bodies that have been dead are the number of torsos. Right. So she's literally like. She went into this blind rage and just like bit and kicked and tore apart everyone, everyone. in that room, except for, as we find out, the lieutenant. Mm -hmm. I should also say that she um, sabotaged two very advanced pieces of Enclave armor, one belonging to the lieutenant and one belonging to the other uh, soldier yeah. that, that had spared her once before. Well, not had spared her, but had warned her since you saved my life here. Leave, run yeah. away. Um and so she gets morning glory and they're trying to escape and morning glory is just like, I can't there. I can't go back. I'm, you know, and her cutie mark has been burned off, which is huge. Again, it, it seems to be equivalent. Like it's an additional uh, power and insult to have your cutie mark burned off to having your wings ripped off. It seems yeah. to be um, it's an identity. It absolutely is. It would be like having your face removed. Yeah. And, um, you know, like old Stalin photos, right? Yeah. You've just been, you know, forgotten. What? Uh, huh? Did never existed. No, it's just, those people do. So they're trying to escape and then one of these sky chariots is basically barreling down on top of them. Yeah. And Blackjack is running out of options and she's like, well, I don't want them to shoot morning glory. So I'm going to take off. And she's like, you know, moving a Z, you know, yeah. zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. And she basically runs out of options and she thinks like, well, let's give the old silver bullet a try. Yeah, I don't have anything except So she loads the silver bullet. She had a gun that could fire a bullet of that caliber. And when she loads it and goes into EFS for the moment, it gives her options, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, what mode would you like to use this in? I don't know this this one. And the one know, that kills them. Yeah, the one that kills them. And then like after she's like, you know, and fire, it's like, and are you sure you want to do this? Yeah. And when she finally pulls the trigger like they're barreling down on her. They're going to fire missiles at her. They may even be in the air at the moment. It creates a cone of protection around her and magically cements her in place. Yeah. And braces her. And it's like, whoa, what the hell is this? And it's just like it shoots this blast of intense radiation, light and energy. The chariot is atomized. There's yeah. nothing remaining of the chariot, nor of the tower behind it. And it burned through the clouds. It opened up a hole to the heavens. Yeah. Focused as far energy. as we could tell, this is in the daytime, too. So it not only cuts a hole through the clouds, but she sees the stars. So it there was uh, this harkens back actually to Chernobyl. Yeah. So when Chernobyl went uh, uh, cataclysmic, right, yeah. when it went blew nuclear. So <laughs> the scientists that were there said that it literally blew a hole in the sky. Yeah. So that not only did it, you know, go up and through the clouds, but they said they could see the stars in broad daylight. Like that's the intense amount of energy that it fired up into the atmosphere. And that's kind of the what the gases I, of the atmosphere. Right. And that's kind of what I imagine happened here, that she shot a hole into the heavens. Mm -hmm. So uh, watch out. Um, anyways, that was 
insane. Yeah. Uh, and then the lieutenant shows up and is like, blah, blah, blah. I could kill you. I, I actually should ask you to join the enclave. That was pretty cool. That was wicked, man. Yeah. Um, but he essentially, he just, you know, says like, I've done what I needed to do here. You know, morning, morning glory can't come back and I've got everything I need. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, the last person shows up, you know, the, the enclave soldier that she saved shows up one last time, um, you know, warns her again, tells her, I didn't, really didn't know what's going on here. And, you know, shit's fucked, right? Yeah. Bye. <laughs> and that's kind of where we leave things off. Yeah. 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 With, with that series of events. Yeah. It is a wild ride. I actually really, like I said, I really enjoyed this chapter. So obviously, and, and I thought the action was great. Like in, I want to say in the way that Somber described the silver bullet super weapon, I could perfectly picture in my head everything that he was describing. Because he was writing it from the perspective of the character who didn't know what was going on yeah. and was just kind of reacting to the moment. Right. right. But it, but I could instantly see in my head her being shored up with magical energy and creating a shield around her because like, not only is this going to protect you, but you have to be held in place by this wickedly crazy weapon. Yeah. Like it would clearly kill you if we didn't wrap yeah. you in this magical energy. Um Jesus H. Christ. These books love super weapons. Oh, yeah. Each each one. Uh, um, Pink Eyes had a super weapon. Oh, yeah. And Fallout Acrestria had a super had the, weapon. Oh, God. The, the, the chocolate milk gun. Yeah. The but, chocolate milk gun is terrifying. But see, in Pink Eyes, the one that I always remember is like the sky. You know? Oh, yeah. The sky <laughs> hammer. Yeah. yeah it's, it's just Jesus Christ. Um, the Solaris Inc. If, uh, if, if, if here's the I hate to say this. If the Equestrians really had weapons like this. Mm hmm. There was no war. Like, how how did it progress to this point that the zebras had any way to resist? Because I mean, the I zebras know. also had. <laughs> yeah, I, that was the. I mean, that, that's what they kind of describe in the book so far, and they will describe it more later. Um, you remember the boneyard? Yeah. The amount of dead the zebras were killing themselves at the city. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, you have these super weapons and you're using them, but there's so many more still they, coming. Yeah, they had the numbers. Yeah. <sighs> so, yeah, but I, I think I've said what I what I wanted to say about this chapter that mm -hmm. I feel like we're, we're getting into the groove of things. We're moving right along. Obviously, the next step is for them to, like, try and recover emotionally and then go save P21. Yeah. Who's being held by, you know, bad people people that work for dais yeah so you kind of like in all of this we've kind of forgotten like oh yeah isn't there a file on your arm in your pit buck that we need to <laughs> decode at some point you need to still go collect some caps yeah so that silver bullet would probably have been worth all the caps and then some but so be it yeah well not without uh not without probably a pit buck to help her fire it because <laughs> it kind of had an initialization protocol it did it did indeed well and that's right it actually said she was approved for some reason yeah probably because, the, probably because of the pit buck yeah probably because the pit buck so yeah um but like what a smart weapon well yeah you kind of have to you don't it want to make me, it doesn't make me question what the other options are right yeah like what else could it do uh, milk chocolate milk the chocolate milk blood really i imagine so that would be terrifying <laughs> <laughs> so with that being said chris We've reached that time again. That time? Yeah, that time. The time, one might say. That time of the month. That time of the day. The hour. Come with me, if you will, Chris, as we stroll along a sunset beach, hand in hand, as the waves lap over our hooves. Because in this scenario, we're both horses, and we're walking by the sea. Sounds good. And that sea... <laughs> It, and that is that a problem? You freaking know there's anything wrong with you, that. You, fr you. you freaking homophone. He's just a little bit. And the sea that we are striding, galloping alongside is the sea of the pony pot of the week. You want to do once more for the back? Yeah. The pony pot of the week. The pony pot of the week. And Chris, the pony pot of the week. Is. Is. So, when Caesar, the leader of the zebra forces, marched his way into Equestria, he had to cross the Rubicult. <laughs> he had to cross the Rubicult. Yes. The die has been cast. Ile acta est. The Manifest Rubicult. Dest, I don't know. 
<laughs> Manifest Destiny. Manifest Destiny. <laughs> and we're not going to tell it again. So, thank you as always for joining us here on The Foley of Man. Um, hopefully... We are able to maintain this schedule. This is like three, three or four weeks in a row, three or four episodes. I know it's a little on the nose. Not next week. Why not next week? Scheduling. Scheduling. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, but no. we'll be back after that. No, it's just <laughs> I had something scheduled that we've had that I've had planned for uh, like two yes, months. Yes, yes, of course. That thing. Yeah, that thing. I'm going to have visitors over. So that seems so that's such a weird thing. Like, you know. It's not like you've just got a bunch of ragtag, you know, like carnies roll it up onto your front lawn. I might mean, as well be, though. Yeah, might as well. So uh, so uh, maybe not next week, but, you know, but soon um, if you enjoy the Foley of Man, uh, make sure to check out our other concurrent series, uh, sister series, the Foley of Man Prey, where we review KCAT's book that merges My Little Pony with the video game Prey, 2017's Prey. But also... Also, um, if you are watching us on YouTube, make sure to check out the audio podcast. Or if you're an audio podcaster, go check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Chris Cocast. Um, and if you're both, keep doing it. Yeah, by all means. If you're downloading and viewing both, please do. Uh, we and usually get straight into your veins. Obviously, if you're watching this at the premiere, thank you for doing the premiere. We try and premiere our episodes uh, Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Last time YouTube effed us right up the poop shoot. Uh, I don't know what was going on there. Yeah, it apparently started skipping the video around to where people would hear part of a sentence and then we'd just skip and go yeah. straight to the end it of the video. Just, it was just, it was buffering horribly. And it's all the time that I've cursed too. Susan's name. But we will uh, henceforth try and keep that consistent, you know, 8 p.m. on Tuesdays. Uh, but by all means, check out some of our other videos. There's always stuff that pops up on the channel. We're always trying to make other things. And if you have something that you think might be interesting, please let us know. If you would like to support the show, we have a Patreon and a subscribe star if you don't like Patreon. And by all means, or by no means, you do not feel as though you have to contribute. There is no requirement. And those that do contribute, there's no additional surprise like, hey, I get extra content. It's literally just you're helping us pay for the server cost and uh, hopefully upgrade our equipment like this nice new light that we have here. I would like to, however, take a moment to thank those of you who do support us on Patreon. So first of all, Sky Arrow. Thank, thank you. you. O'Malley Caboose 5. Thank, thank you. Arcus Acer. Thank, thank you. Moon 45 Sun. Thank, thank you. And Tinker. Thank, thank you. you. Remember, everybody, if you'd like to email us, you can do so at cbpbch at gmail.com. Again, that is cbpbch at gmail.com. And you can also check out the podcast directly at thefolioofman.libson.com. Is there anything I'm forgetting? I don't know. We have a Facebook and a Twitter. Don't, don't use check them. them. Where you need to be is on the Discord. The Discord is where it is at. Link below. In fact, last week when YouTube fucked us, we all streamed the episode on Discord and just watched it there. Yep. Which was awesome. Yeah. I should also say that the authors of all these fan fictions we have reviewed are a part of the community. I wouldn't say that they're always available, but when they do show up, uh, they are very courteous and kind and very happy to answer questions about the text. I, I would say that... Please do not pester them with questions. Yes, please. <laughs> just... I know. Be, be respectful. Hey, K-Cat's here. Let me ask you a laundry list. <laughs> here's here's all. <laughs> here's my list of <laughs> problems I have with Fallout Equestria. And she's like, I wrote that thing a decade ago. Obviously, Shut there's, up. <laughs> right, that, that there's problems. But with that, I would always like to thank Mimezinga, Somber and K-Cat for uh, allowing us to review their fan fiction and for making the stories in the and first place. And for making the stories in the first place. And if there is any way for y'all to support them, please do so. Yeah. Yeah. You know, tell your friends. Tell your friends about the books. You don't have to tell them about this show. Just tell your friends about the books. Um, yeah. So it's been it's been fun. It's been real. You know, it's not you. It's me. Uh, and with the, it's me, it's you know, it's time to go. It's time to wrap up. It's time to take the saddle off and give yourself a nice. Cone. Are you done? I'm done. All right. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on the Foley of Man for Chris. I'm Robert. This has been the Foley of Man and we will see y'all next time. Bye, guys. And gals. And Smith Mars. It's all over but the cry. Welcome to the
Foley of Man. Welcome to the Foley of Man. <laughs> Memory. You have to grab a hammer to get me going higher. Yeah. <laughs> Bang. Ah! <laughs> Foley calling in my mind. Oh. It's forever your sweet memories. <laughs> Wait, memories? Are they mare memories or are they mare mammaries? <laughs> Why not both? Poor K and no lowest dose. Um, I'm deeply unsettled at the idea of memories. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, horses are mammalian. They, they are. They are. So, you ever had horse butter? I feel like that's a, that's a... Sorry, is that a personal question? That sounds like a butt lube. <laughs> yeah, you've got... No, no, I can't do Astroglide. No. Nothing made of petroleum. No <laughs> cock like horse cock. Send my asshole in shot. <laughs> oh, that's right. You never heard that song. I have not heard that song. Oh. <laughs> I, I keep butchering like, the only, pacing of the music. But... Only the finest mare butter for me. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm all organic. <laughs> free range <laughs> All right, go wherever ahead. it drops go ahead and get us started